I'm Kath, welcome to my channel Made by Kath Craft. Thank you so much for joining me today for my latest vlog, where I'll be talking all about what I've been making in January. So um, I've had a bit of a busier month in January on the sewing front than I expected. Um, we've been in lockdown here since pretty much the beginning of January. Um, my children didn't go back to school, I've been homeschooling them. So it's been quite busy in the days and I thought I wouldn't have a chance to sew. But actually I've really enjoyed um, getting my sewing machine out in the evenings. And I found it a really um, good way to relax a little bit and to use my brain in a different way, um, not homeschool, <laughs> not homeschool brain, and also just to do something that's kind of for me as Kath rather than for me as mum. So I've enjoyed that and I've got some things to show you and I'm really looking forward to showing you them. But before I get started, I thought I'd um, talk about what I'm wearing today. And this is one of my brightest makes, I think. It's a um, toaster sweater by Soho House 7. This is the pattern here. Um, it's this version here with the um, sort of funnel collar and the big cuffs and the bottom band, just the cuffs there. And I made it in this um, quite bright um, kind of rainbow coloured um, sweatshirt fleece fabric that I got from Lily and Mimi fabric um, shop. And they have some amazing um, jerseys, really brightly coloured ones. Um, and it's really cosy, it's really thick sweatshirt fleece. It's not super stretchy, but it's fine for the toaster sweater because it's got quite a big neck um, to fit over my head and that sort of thing. Um, and I'll put a picture of me wearing it so you can see it. But um, we went on a bike ride this morning um, and I wanted to wear something that would keep me really warm and this worked well for that. <laughs> so I might overheat a little bit during this vlog wearing it. But um, yeah, it's bright and colourful and quite cheery, I think, given the um, current climate. Um, with the lockdown and everything. So um, yeah, anything that can give a little cheer is good, I think. But let me get started um, on what I've been making this month. So my first make this month was one of the things um, I planned um, to get done, if you watched my January fabric haul and sewing and um, plans vlog. And it was a cropped version of the Nina Lee Southbank sweater in this lovely um, black sweatshirt fleece from Guthrie Garney. And it's really nice. It's kind of a thinner sweatshirt fleece than this one. It's, it's still really cosy and it's got a lovely fleck to it. Um, and I made this in a crop version, as you can see there, fairly short. Um, and I made it with the little funnel top and the cuffs. Um, and this I made because I wanted a jumper that was cropped like a pop on top of my smock dresses. So I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see how it looks. And I've already worn this a couple of times in January. It's so useful. And um, particularly if I get colder in my smock dress at home, just to be able to pop this on top and warm myself up, it's perfect. And the dress um, that I'm wearing over, in case you're interested um, in this picture, is an indigo dress by Tilly and the Buttons. And I made it in an Atelier Brunette viscose twill. Um, I can't remember what it's called, it's a beautiful fabric though, and really lovely and soft, um, and I made that about a year ago, and I haven't had anything exactly right to wear it with, so I'm really pleased to have this um, jumper to keep me cosy, so I can wear it all through winter too. And I'll show you the pattern. So yep, here's the Nina Lee Southbank sweater and sweater dress, and there are three versions, the dress version, kind of standard jumper, and the short version, and this is the version I opted to make. I think my version is slightly longer than this one, um, I think I lengthened the pattern maybe by a couple of inches, just because I've got a fairly long body and I wanted to make sure it was cosy, but essentially that's the version I made. So I could make most of it on the overlocker, um, except the bottom hem here, that had to be um, hemmed on the sewing machine, because there was no bottom band to add there. Um, so it was a really quick sew, I made the size 8 and then I um, graded in the arms to the size 6, which is what I always do on the south bank. I do find Nina Lee patterns are very true to size and generally they fit quite, they're quite fitted. So it's not a pattern company I would size down on generally. Um, so yeah, the size 8 with size um, 6 arms because I do have quite skinny arms. Um, and yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It's just a really practical um, item that I think I'll get loads of wear out of. And a couple of people have actually asked me recently um, whether it's worth having both the toaster sweater and the South Bank sweater patterns, because they're kind of similar in some ways. I got the toaster sweater pattern first um, when I was fairly new to sewing, and I didn't know about the South Bank sweater. Um, so um, I then went, wanted to get the South Bank sweater as well, particularly for the sweater dress version, because I really like that version. But they are fairly similar. The main difference, I think, is um, firstly, um, the toast sweater has the raglan sleeves, whereas the Nina Lee South Bank has a slightly dropped shoulder sleeve. And then the toast sweater has the sort of oversized cuffs and oversized bottom band, whereas the Nina Lee has more of a standard size. And I'd also say maybe the Nina Lee is slightly more fitted, but not too much difference. So I don't think you do need both. I do quite like the variation and being able to make the different versions with the raglan 
and the um, drop sleeve. But I don't think you do need both and I guess I'd say probably this is the more flexible pattern just for three lengths. But then equally this one has this lovely other version here um, which has a kind of split um, hem and this um, top, how do they describe this top? A sort of mini final neck. Um, so I guess it depends what you want. So I'm not sure I have an easy answer as to whether it's worth getting both patterns but I can say that I've got a lot of use out of both patterns so for me it has been worthwhile having both. My next make is another make that I plan to make in January and I did make and it's been one I've wanted to make for a while and it was using this pattern here which is the Kyoto sweater and tee by Papercut Patterns. Um, I really love this pattern. It's a sweater and t-shirt pattern that's quite a boxy shape but it's got this lovely um, ruffle detail on the sleeves and um, I'll just show you the line drawings. As I said there's a sweater version with the cuffs and bottom band and then a standard tee and it's a very boxy shape. Um, so I uh, made my version in this really lovely bamboo jersey which I got from Sister Mintaka and here it is um, all finished. Um, it's kind of hard one to kind of show up on the camera just like this because it doesn't really look like much when you're holding it up but I really love it. Um, the bamboo fabric is super duper drapey so it's lovely for a boxy t-shirt I think because it gives it a really nice drape over your figure. Um, this bamboo jersey um, from Sister Mintaka was 95% bamboo and 5% elastane so it is very um, bamboo rich so it does have this beautiful drape and it's lovely and silky. Um, and I understand that bamboo is antibacterial and very highly moisture wicking as well so it's quite a cool fabric um, and also it's quite a sustainable plant the bamboo I understand so it's good for the environment in that respect um, but yeah it was a lovely um, so actually I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on and the drape is just lovely and actually I was a little bit nervous about sewing with the bamboo jersey because it's so drapey I wasn't sure if it would be tricky to sew with and if it would slip around but I was very pleasantly surprised actually. Um, it was more stable than I expected, both when I was cutting out the fabric and also um, when I came to sewing it. Um, I thought it might stretch a little bit, but I didn't find it did. The neckband went in um, really easily and actually it didn't feel too different to working with cotton jersey really. Um, I use my walking foot. Um, I've got a FAF Ambition 1.0 and it's got the IDT system, so it's got a built-in walking foot, um, which I love. And I use that, um, which always helps to feed through the jersey fabrics easily um, and to sort of stop them kind of stretching differently, which did help. But um, other than that, yeah, I thought it was really stable actually. Um, so I had the ruffles and I did a little turn up for the ruffles, as you can see here. Um, but I think you can do them in different ways. You can use, I just um, turned it over with a little teeny turn up, but you can use a rolled hemmed foot or kind of do a little finish where you can see the sewing line at the bottom. But I like how I finished it. Um, and I just think it's going to be one I'm going to get loads of wear out of. Um, I've got it in the picture um, with a pair of jeans, but I think it would also work really well with a skirt or a pair of shorts in summer because it's um, supposed to be very breathable. It'll be lovely for summer too. So I'm really pleased with it. Um, I made the smallest size on this pattern. Let me have a just quick check. So the, the, I made the extra extra small, which is for a bust of 32 and a quarter inches, which is about me. And then the waist and hip measurements are slightly smaller than me. They're 24 and a half inches and 34 and a half inches. And I'm more of a 26, 36. But because it's so boxy, actually, there was plenty of room. So that, that size worked fine for me. Oh, and the only thing I wanted to mention, actually, the only um, slight adjustment I made to the pattern, or a slight addition to the pattern I made, was the pattern doesn't mention about um, stabilising the shoulder seams, but I did stabilise the shoulder seams. I added just, um, oh, you probably can't see it very easily, but I added a ribbon along the shoulder seams just to hold them in place. Just because it's such a drapey fabric, I didn't want them to kind of droop out of shape, so I stabilised the shoulder seams as part of the sewing. But other than that, I followed the pattern. It sewed up really quickly. I'm really pleased with it, actually. Um, it's a basic and plain colour. And I do often like prints, but I do like having some basic plain colours in my wardrobe too. So I'm thinking this one will be really useful. But that was the paper cut Coyote tee. My next make is a double make. It's um, two poofs I made, one for my son and one for my daughter to go in their bedrooms. Um, and I made them using the closet core poof pattern. And I'll put details up of the pattern because I don't have the print out. Um, it's a pattern I've used a couple of times before to make um, poofs for our downstairs. They've got so much use and my son and daughter really love them. So they asked if I could make them each one to go in their bedrooms. So they chose the fabrics themselves. They came from Minerva. They had a good old look and a choose. And I've sewed those up and um, I'll show you them now. So I've just got my daughter's one here. It's quite heavy, but I've got it up to the camera. 
and I'll just show you a little bit of that one. Um, here it is. Uh, my daughter's um, into her pink, so she chose this mixture of kind of pink patchwork type fabrics. And I think they've come together really nicely and they look quite pretty. Um, it's got a zip on the bottom, so um, that's quite handy. I do find after a bit of use, the poofs do start to sort of embed down. So it's nice to be able to add a bit more um, fabric inside. Um, and actually, I don't know, you probably can't see because <laughs> it looks huge. But I actually made these two poofs in a slightly smaller size than our downstairs ones. Because my son and daughter's rooms are fairly small and I wanted them to fit in there well and leave some playing space on the floor too. So I sized them down and I've actually written a blog post where I talk about the adjustments I made. So I'll, um, I'll pop a link down below to that in case you're interested in making a slightly smaller size poof yourself. Um, this is my daughter's one and I'll just get my son's one now. Here's my son's one. He chose these quite funky blue colours um, and you'll probably notice I um, use piping around the edging of the poofs and I only like the finish that gives and it's quite a straightforward thing to do and um, Closet Core has a tutorial on how to make the piping and then how to apply it um, on their website um, and so if you have a look at my blog article I've included links to the tutorials so you can see how that works but yeah this is my son's one I think the colours are really stunning actually um, and I made um, I made internal bags for both of them to um, keep the fabrics in and actually I was quite pleased I did for my daughters particularly because it's a lighter fabric and a few scraps ended up outside the bag in the poof and you could slightly see them through the poof it kind of like almost looked like a stain I thought oh no what's happened it was just a little bit of fabric so the bags are made out of calico so they're quite a light colour so that kind of keeps all the darker fabrics inside and stops any kind of fabrics showing through to the outside of the poof and they're fully interfaced to kind of hold their structure and um, I mentioned in my vlog where I talked about these poofs that I was a little bit concerned about um, how I was going to fill them because I'd used up so much of my fabric scraps already on our downstairs ones. Um, in the end my mum um, donated me some old sheets and old clothes that she hadn't didn't need and had kind of um, they got holes in and were a bit sort of scruffy so I used those and then I actually found a few more fabric scraps in the loft that my husband had stuck up there so that was quite handy. And I also used some old baby clothes we still had for my son and daughter. So that's quite nice putting those in there actually because I was a bit reluctant to let go of some of them. So that way they kind of I get to keep them but they're doing something useful. But um, I actually uh, mentioned on Instagram as well and on here that I was struggling um, for ideas for what to stuff them with. And people came up with some really great ideas so I thought I'd share a few. Um, cuddly toy storage. Um, old um, or spare duvets, old towels or spare towels and spare sheets. Um, there were a couple of other ideas and I've included more of them on my blog article. So again, for all the details, do have a look at that. But I'm really pleased with how they turned out. I'll put a picture up of um, both of them in, in their rooms so you can see how they look in situ. But I think my son and daughter are quite pleased with them. A couple of people have asked me if it's a tricky thing to sew and how fiddly it is. The closet core instructions are really clear and I think it's mostly just process. There's a lot of cutting out the right shapes, interfacing them, sewing straight lines to get them together. The main fiddly bits I'd say is making sure that all the triangles meet neatly in the top so it's a kind of a nice um, even, um, and yeah, so they look even in the middle. Um, and the other thing is um, putting the invisible zip on the bottom if you do want to be able to open and close your poof and add more stuffing. Um, but other than that, it is fairly straightforward um, and a really enjoyable little project, so um, I definitely recommend it if you fancy giving it a go. My next make is actually um, one of my garments I put on my Make 9 2021 plans list, which is a list of nine garments that I really wanted to sew this year. And I've done a separate vlog where I talk about those nine sewing patterns and my plans. Um, and it's this pattern here. It's the um, Fleetwood Dress by French Navy. Um, I've made a couple of other French navy patterns and really enjoyed them. I made the Celan tee, which is quite a boxy jersey tee, and the Forsyth dress, which is a lovely um, dropped waist um, dress. And I talk about that, I think, in my December makes vlog. And I'll put a link up above if you want to check out that, that make. But the Fleetwood dress is just a really lovely um, shirt dress with a few pretty details. So it's got a yoke at the top, both at the front and the back and a button placket. It's got a gathered skirt, which I think is quite cute, and it's got um, cuffs with sleeve vents. And I'd never made um, sleeve vents before. Um, other blouses I've made have been um, ga gathered with elastic or finished in other ways. So I was quite keen on trying that out and um, learning a new skill. And um, I wasn't necessarily planning on making this one this month, but um, I was looking in my fabric stash. I don't have a big fabric stash, but I was having a look at it over the new year and thinking I really would like to use some of these fabrics. 
and I found a fabric in there that I've had for a while and that I've been really reluctant to cut into. I think I've had it so long and the longer I've had it, the longer I've procrastinated and felt less certain about what I want to make. And I thought, right, I'm, I think it will look nice as this dress. I'm just going to um, give it a go. Um, but before I show you the actual dress I made, um, I thought I'd talk through a bit about this pattern. Um, so I'd say the Forsyth dress would be an okay pattern for a fairly confident beginner to tackle. But the Fleetwood dress, I would say, is a little bit more complicated and I would say it's more of an intermediate pattern just because of all the little details. Um, particularly things like the sleeve vents, they are quite fiddly. Um, and um, yeah, um, it's, the instructions are really great, but I think it, you might want to have a few more um, garments sewn under your belt before you tackle this one. Um, I um, What I decided to do for it, because I looked at the measurements and the measurements, I came across sizes. So my bust is 32, which put me at the smallest size A, but my waist is 26, which put me at a size B, um, and so is my hips. And I wasn't sure how to go with this garment. It looked like that it was a little bit um, oversized as the finished bust measurement for A was 35 inches and the waist was 30 and three quarter inches for the smallest size, which is bigger than me. So I thought I'd give that a go, but I was a little concerned because I've got fairly broad shoulders that I might need to do some sort of shoulder adjustment on it. And because it's a woven fabric, it wouldn't be very forgiving. So I decided I'd make a toile of the bodice before I actually cut into my um, nice fabric. So I made a toile of the bodice and I'll show you it here. Um, in this um, fabric here, which I had left over from my haul from a Tokri. Um, and it's a nice um, kind of like e-cat cotton. I didn't really have enough of it to make an, into a garment, so I thought it would be quite useful to use for this toile, and it will kind of be a similar weight to the um, fabric I was using for my actual um, actual proper make. So I made a toile of it, um, and I think it's, it looks quite sweet actually, but it's not finished, it's just a bodice, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it um, for now. And I did find I needed to make a few adjustments when I tried it on. Um, the first thing I did was I made a forward shoulder adjustment just by one centimetre because the shoulder um, seam line was sitting a little bit far back and I know that can make it, sometimes it feel like the garment's sitting up a bit too high so I wanted to get that right so I adjusted that by one centimetre. I also found that it was quite tight fitting around um, my armpit so I um, widened the armhole a little bit um, and I'll show you how I did that. So it's a bit of an unusual pattern or different to what I've done before because there's actually a side pattern piece like this which has the armhole in it rather than a front and a back piece where you join them together to make the armhole. So this is the side of the bodice um, and it's got the dart and the notches there for where you attach the sleeve. And to widen the armhole I basically took this um, down a little bit here, I think by about a centimetre or so, just to sort of loosen up under my arm. And I then adjusted the um, sleeve pieces to make them slightly wider at the top where so the sleeve would be accordingly slightly wider by about a centimetre to fit the new shape here. And that made all the difference I needed, so it's much um, more comfortable under my arm there. I also found, which is something I don't ever usually find, that it came up quite tight on my arms, and I have quite skinny arms like I mentioned before, so it's quite unusual for me, but the cuffs were really tight. They're designed to sit about um, mid-length, mid I think just below the elbow around here. So yeah, this, this is the cuff here with a little sleeve vent. So I widened that too, um, by a couple of centimetres actually, just so that it wouldn't feel too uncomfortable and restrictive around here. Um, so I was really pleased I made a toile in this. I actually, um, yeah, I actually kind of unpicked the sleeve and redid it a little bit wider just to check that it would fit okay. Um, so I'm really pleased I made a toile because I think if I hadn't and I'd gone straight ahead and made this one, it might not have been as comfortable as I'd have liked and I might not get so much wear out of it as I hopefully will. But those are the adjustments I made and now let me show you um, my dress. So here's my final version that I made, and I made it in this beautiful um, chambray fabric, which as I said I had in my stash for ages and I was really nervous about cutting into because I'd left it um, sitting there for so long and I don't usually like to do that with fabrics. But yeah, it's a lovely chambray, it's got kind of a Paris theme, it's got the Eiffel Tower on it and some Breton striped jumpers and some little hearts. And um, I just think it's a really pretty fabric and I was really pleased to be able to put it some use. I had these buttons in my stash as well, these pinky ones, and they were a perfect match, so I was pleased about that and had enough to be able to use them on the cuffs too. Um, so I didn't make any other alterations to the pattern other than the ones I mentioned. I kept the um, bodice length the same as per the pattern and also the tiers of the skirt. Um, but yeah, it was a really enjoyable sew. Um, it's got some lovely details, like a bias bound um, collar, which I really like how neat that looks. It's got the yoke at the back of the slight gathering, which I think is quite pretty. And yeah, just lots of lovely little details. So I'd really recommend this one if you'd like a more, slightly more complex shirt dress sew. And I'll put up a picture of me wearing it so you can see how it looks on. 
but um, I'm hoping I'll get a lot of wear out of it. I think it's a bit of fun. Um, and yeah, it was just a really um, enjoyable make. But I definitely was glad I did a twirl on that one. So if you're going to make one, maybe consider doing a twirl too, just because of all the fitting of it around the bodice. And then my next make um, is not one for me. It's actually one I made for my husband and was a quite a quick one. It wasn't one I was particularly expecting to make, but um, it's a pair of pyjama bottoms and his um, ready to wear pair had um, got a hole in the knee. So I said, would you like a new pair? And we had a look on Minerva and found some fabric for them. Um, he's a bit funny about fabrics. Um, I quite like the fabric we chose in the end. It's this um, quite classic pyjama um, tartan type green and blue. He somehow seemed to think the tartan check, the check might, print might be a bit too big and they might prefer smaller squares. Um, but I said, let's order it and have a look. And he was okay with it when, when he arrived. I think he's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, but anyway, the pyjama pattern um, I used was this one here, which I used, well, I've used him once before. It's a Simplicity 15208A. It's a pattern I've had in my um, stash for ages um, and it seems to fit him nicely. Um, the only adjustments I made was this time he said, could I add pockets um, so he could pop his phone and things in. So I borrowed a pocket piece, pattern piece, I think possibly from the Myosotis pattern, just because it had quite a pattern piece that would look quite compatible. And I added pockets, so he's got those. And then I also did a bit of, um, used a bit of my embroidery um, stitches on my machine, had a bit of fun um, and put the back here so daddy pyjamas um so he knows which way the back is um and i kind of added that on before i sewed the um the band over so that it doesn't show through um uh, but yeah i just quite enjoy any opportunities to get out the um, embroidery functions so that's those and i'll put a picture up of him wearing them um it was just a nice quick make and i made those just after i made my fleetwood dress so it's quite nice to do something quite simple and straightforward where i didn't need to think too much about it and this is a um cotton I think it's kind of like a cotton poplin but it's quite a nice soft one so it's quite not too um heavy and that's nice for him because he does get hot in bed um so he wouldn't want like anything like a brush cotton that'll be too thick for him but yeah i like them i think the large check is nice and i think he does now too um so that's those the simplicity 15208 it's a great pattern actually because it's for adults and children so um yeah if my children ever wanted me to i could sew up a little pair of pajama shorts or bottoms for them too using that pattern so my next and final um garment i wanted to show you is actually rather than a new make it's a slight refashion um and i think they're quite nice to share too because minor alterations i think can make big differences to clothes so i had to look through my winter wardrobe a couple of weekends ago because it's been winter here um for a couple of months and i wanted to see what i was wearing and what i wasn't wearing and then for the things I w hadn't been wearing, to have a think about why I'm not wearing them and if I could maybe tweak them a little bit to make them more, more wearable. And I came across a dress which I really love, but I haven't worn once. And I made it, I think, just before it started to get summery last year, around May. And then it got really hot, so I didn't wear it then. But I thought, oh, I'll get loads of wear out of it when it comes to winter. But I haven't been reaching for it. And so I wanted to figure out why. And it's a dress I made using this pattern here, which is a sew over it pattern and it's the Georgie dress and it's got a really lovely um sort of wrap bodice with a little pleat here so I th it kind of reminds me of like a ballerina's cardigan I think it's quite pretty and then it's got two skirts I think either a three-quarter circle skirt which is designed for thicker fabrics like ponty and then a gathered skirt which is designed for lighter weight jerseys um, but it's a really lovely, um, I think quite feminine um, pattern and I really enjoyed making it um, and I made my version in this um, really lovely kind of forest green um, viscose jersey which I got from Minerva I believe. I think it might be a Lady McElroy viscose jersey. Um, but yeah, so it's got lovely kind of pleated detail here. And another really nice thing I think about this um, wrap dress is it's got, um, uses clear elastic around the neck, um, around the bodice sort of front here. So it holds the bodice in place really securely so there's no gaping. So I think it's really nice how it's constructed. And the other thing that's nice about it is that the bodice is fully lined. The sleeves, as you can see, aren't, but the bodice is fully lined, which makes it quite cosy for winter. So I thought I'd really love to wear this this winter. Why am I not wearing it? And I had a look and I decided, I think it was a bit too long for me. Um, so I'd made it, um, I'd made it per the pattern and I think I'd already shortened it a little bit to just below the knee and I just thought I just don't really ever reach for anything that's below the knee, it just doesn't feel very me and I guess maybe if I was going to work in an office it might be quite nice with a pair of heels and be quite kind of business-like but for my life at home with the kids it doesn't really feel, it felt a bit too dressy maybe. So I shortened it by about three inches and I feel like that made a big difference. Um, so I'll put a picture up of how it was before with the longer length and then now I'll put a picture up of how it looks now with a shorter length. 
So it's only three inches change, but I feel like it's made a huge difference and I'm definitely gonna be getting out more. I really love the color and the fabric. And as I said, it's perfect and cozy for winter. So I'm hoping that that small change that really didn't take long at all will make a big difference. Um, so that's that one, um, but it's a lovely pattern. I definitely um, recommend you have a look at it. Um, yeah, it's really pretty and it was a nice one to sew up to. A bit of a different construction with the wrap bodice because I haven't made a lot of wrap tile style dresses. But that's the Georgie dress by Sew Over at London. Um, and yeah, just a small refashion. And now, um, as is often the way, I thought I'd um, finish off my vlog by showing you my latest um, knitted kittens. So if you've seen my previous makes vlogs, you'll know I've been making a quite a few little knitted kitties and they come from this book here, um, which I've been working my way through. I got it as a Christmas or birthday present, maybe a year or so ago. It's Knitted Cats and Kittens by Sue Stratford. And the latest ones are what they're, oh, they're called Crazy Kittens. And I made one each, my son and daughter, and here they are. So they're quite cute little small um, kitties. They've got little tails. Um, I made one with white socks, so using this cream yarn. And one without. Um, my daughter ended up with the one with white socks and my son um, wants one with white socks as well now <laughs> in a classic um, way of siblings. So now I'm knitting my third one with white socks but no um, white splodge at the end of the tail just so they can tell them all apart. Um, but yeah I think they're quite sweet little things. Um, I made these using sock yarn so it's quite a like, kind of fine yarn and quite nice to knit with. I used I think that it uses maybe two and three quarter uh, millimetre needles so quite fine. And they were, they're a bit fiddly, but they were fun to sew. And then they've got these little um, whiskers, um, again, using this kind of um, linen thread. Um, so they're kind of, they're kind of, it's a little bit stiffer. So they're kind of a bit higgledy-piggledy. Um, but yeah, they were fun to sew, um, if a bit fiddly. And I'm pleased how they turned out. I think they've got quite cute little tails. Um, and they're the latest ones to add to my um, son and daughter's collection. So they're amassing quite a large collection of kittens in their rooms now. But they seem to like them. And they're quite a nice little project. Um, just to be able to sit and do a little bit of on an evening. Um, there is quite a lot of sewing up involved, which isn't my favorite bit, um, but it is quite nice when they do come together. Um, so yeah, there's the latest ones, these little crazy kittens. And I'll show you them in the book, just in case you're interested as well. Um, there, there they are in a different range of colors there. Um, I find it quite hard to get sock yarn in all the different colors. So I was quite pleased to get this um, one, which is kind of like a variegated, um, and it has quite a nice effect. because I guess each one will be slightly different in terms of their markings. But yeah, there they are, um, Crazy Kittens. And a few people have asked me um, if um, Knitted Cats and Kittens would be a suitable book um, for a fairly um, new knitter. And I would say um, if you have got a few projects under your belt and you're feeling confident to um, learn some new techniques, then, um, then it'll be okay. But it is a bit of a stretch, so it probably um, wouldn't be good unless you are feeling pretty confident. Because um, there are quite a lot of new techniques in the book and there are some fiddly bits too. And um, yeah, it definitely was a learning curve for me using some of the new techniques. So um, I would say maybe not for a totally new beginner, but if you are wanting to up your knitting game, it's a good one because they're fairly small projects for learning new techniques. But it is a lovely book. Um, if you are a beginner and looking to learn to knit or are fairly new to it, this is a book that I started knitting with. Um, I thought I'd mention it because I haven't think I mentioned it before. It's called Nitty Gritty and it's by Anita Patel and I'll include a link to it down below on Amazon in case you're interested. Um, it's a lovely book. Um, it starts at the front with the basic knitting techniques and then it takes you through um, a series of small projects which build up your skills each time and the language is very clear so it really feels like it holds your hand through learning to knit and just to build your confidence um, up as you go through. And I found it a really useful book to start with. Um, I didn't make every project in the book, but I made a fair few of them just practicing um, and learning to knit through it. So that's the book I'd recommend. Um, but this is a lovely book too, um, if you are looking for something to say um, up your skills with knitting. Um, and that's the last thing I have to show you today for my January Sewing Makes vlog. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate um, it. And thank you to everyone who subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, then I'd love you to subscribe and join me for future vlogs where I'll be talking more about sewing, knitting, fabric, patterns, and all those lovely crafty things. Um, hope you have um, a great day, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye.